Well, the Prime Minister didn't pull any punches in a speech at the UN General Assembly last night in which he said that President Putin was desperate and will be defeated in the war in Ukraine. It was the first speech at the UN General Assembly here in New York and she said uh, that this was going to be a decisive moment in the history of freedom and that 2022 would be the story of freedom fighting back. Really interesting, this is part of the consistent line that we're seeing from the UK government. Liz Truss determined to prove that following on from Boris Johnson, the UK will remain united in the support of Ukraine. She went on to say that the invasion had been a catastrophic failure and condemned the president for what she said were barbarous acts in the country. It was a widely warmly received speech from Liz Truss and it was echoed in many ways by some of the other speeches we heard at the United Nations yesterday, not least of all from Jens Stoltenberg, the NATO Secretary General, when he said that the answer is not to step down but to stop or to support, stop supporting Ukraine. He said the answer, if anything, is to step up and to further support the country. All this followed, of course, Liz Truss' first bilateral meeting with the US President Joe Biden, again part of an effort to shield a united front from the West when it comes to the war in Ukraine. Very much both leaders on the same page. Joe Biden insisting that the UK remains the strongest and oldest ally of the United States. In fact, a Downing Street spokesperson afterwards concluded that the pair both agreed to redouble their efforts to end the energy dependence on Russia and that they needed to find energy independence to ensure they didn't rely on authoritarianism when it comes to energy in the future. So what we're being painted is a very consistent picture from the UK government that effectively nothing has changed in the last couple of months, even though the government clearly has changed in Westminster. And this all is going to come ahead of the foreign minister, the new foreign minister, James Cleverly, who's going to be at the UN Security Council later on, alongside the Russian foreign minister. And again, being briefed out beforehand, a pretty tough message, it must be said, from the UK government. James Cleverly is going to set out how Russian forces continue to commit atrocities against Ukraine and violate international law and that they need to be held accountable forward. Of course, the United Nations itself is all pretty impotent in regards to this, given the fact that Russia sits on that Security Council and has a veto. China, of course, has as well. But it is interesting, as the Prime Minister now flies back to the United Kingdom. The focus here clearly has been on the war in Ukraine, but very much at home, the agenda will shift, won't it, to those interest rates decision we're expecting at midday today, and also to that key moment tomorrow, that fiscal event, and we're going to find out the substantial and rather controversial tax cuts that the government's going to embark on.